Konnichiwa everybody and welcome back to another video. Now this week something a bit different and quite exciting. Here we are in 2022 and we've got two brand new Dreamcast games. We've got in this case we've got Rush Rush Rally Reloaded and Yeah Yeah Beebies. Now, these are both games by Wave Game Studios, uh, which do have a website if you want to check them out. Um, it's wavegamestudios.com, all lowercase, uh, where they've got details of other, other uh, Dreamcast products that they do. Um, I think there are currently five available. Um, and I think there are a couple more planned in the near future. Um, I've picked mine up from Hidden Chest Gaming, uh, which you're probably all aware of. Um, but if you're not, there are the details. Go check Dana out. And he's recently started stocking these Dreamcast games by Wave Game Studios. And like I say, he's got five in stock, or he did have last week when I was there. Um, I don't know if he sold them all now. He might, I don't know. But uh, get in touch with him. I'm sure he can sort you out. Even if you can't get to the shop, I'm sure he can do you some mail order. There's a blast from the past in itself, isn't it, mail order? Um, but yeah, there are five in total that Dana's got in stock. And I think they're all the ones that they currently supply. Uh, there are these two, as I've said. Rush Rush Rally Reloaded. And yeah yeah babies and there's also Xenocider which I was really tempted to get and I think that's the one I'd like to get next and then there's also Flea which you might know off the Evercade and then there's Intrepid Izzy which I think is a, um, a Metroidvania game um, so they're the five all together and I think that upcoming is Postal, the old game that was provocative back in the day when it on the PC I think it was. But yeah, these are the two I bought. Um, obviously Rush Rush Rally Reloaded, you know anybody who knows the channel knows I love my racing games so this was the one that stood out to me. Um, and that all these games are £30 or less and you know, to get brand new Dreamcast games in itself in 2022 is fantastic in my opinion, but when they're so reasonably priced, you know, how can you go wrong? Um, but this one in particular, this is only 10 quid, and it was kind of an impulse purchase really, because I thought, you know, for 10 quid it can't be up to much, can it? Um, you know, this was the one I, I particularly wanted. Um, and, but I'd like to pick all five up in the, you know, in the future. Um, but you know, we've only got so much money to spend, haven't we? So, next time, I'll, sh I'll definitely go for Xenocider next, I think. But, we're here to talk today about these two brand new Dreamcast games. And oh, one thing I forgot to point out is some of them come in both Japanese and UK style cases. Um, I'm not sure if they all do, um, but the only one Dana had was Intrepid Easy in Japanese style, the others were just in UK style. But I'm guessing most people would probably want the UK style anyway. Um, the one thing that did sort of uh, throw me a bit was I was expecting these to be universal, as in that play on any Dreamcast, but I don't know if it's me in particular, but these won't work on my Japanese Dreamcast that only work on the PAL one. So if that's important to you, maybe, you know, something to think about. I was expecting them to be like, you know, kind of a, a repro in the sense that they'd work on anything. Uh, but they don't, or well, at least mine don't. But first up, we'll talk about Rush, Rally, Rush Rush Rally Reloaded. And I think this has been around a while, possibly. I, I, I remember this from a, a few years ago. I've got a feeling I've played it possibly on the Wii. 
I thought it was on the Switch, but I checked and it wasn't. There was a similar set name game, but it was nothing like this. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm convinced I've played this on something. It, it might have been the Virtual Console. But anyway, it's now on the Dreamcast. Um, these are all 2022 releases. Um, and the great thing about this, it also comes and you get, you know, it's, it's a really nice quality case. It, there's nothing sort of low value about it. You know, it's got kind of, it's got an instruction manual, but this also comes with the soundtrack CD as well. And in this case, the, the soundtrack is fantastic. It's really reminiscent of old school, uh, like Amiga or SNES type racing games. You know, it made me think of Lotus Turbo Challenge and Top Gear. Really great soundtrack. So to have the CD, an added bonus. And like I say, they're all now more than 30. This one is 25. Um, and basically, it's it's a very arcadey, top-down racing game, much like sort of micro machines in some ways, but it's also really quite reminiscent of Thrash Rally um, on the Neo Geo, or Rally Chase, as it was called in other regions. Um, it does feature that quite a lot and it's a great game in my opinion it's really it's quite it's quite a, a steep learning curve um, you really need to not learn the track layouts um, but once you do and, and you, you know you nail the the track and you and you, you win the race oh, it feels so good um, and you've got sort of two main game modes. You've got a sort of one-on-one -on -one against the, your, your computer opponent in a micro machine style where, where you've got to outrun him on the screen. And then you've got the main game mode, which is the Grand Prix mode, where you've got to finish each race in the top three to then progress to the next race. And therein lies your biggest learning curve until you've got to learn the track it's hard to finish in the top three. So repetition and practice is the key to success. Um, you can, thankfully, there is a time attack mode which allows you to practice the tracks you've opened up before you then try them again in the Grand Prix mode. And I think there are 20 tracks in total from, from what I can make out on the, on the option screen. You've got a choice of cars, all with different attri attributes. Um, and it's just really nice graphics obviously you know it's retro it's not cutting edge you know don't think it's ps4 standard but if you like your retro games this is a great game to buy in my opinion but i won't waffle on any longer we'll cut to some uh, actual game footage and you can see what it's all about and i'll give you my thoughts on what i think of it basically so, hope you enjoy Rush Rush Rally Reloaded. So, here we are with some gameplay footage from Rush Rush Rally Reloaded on the Sega Dreamcast by Wave Game Studio. And fantastic to have a brand new Dreamcast in 2022. So, what's it all about? Well, it's a retro racing game, much akin to Micro Machines on the Mega Drive. Top down, arcade action, and it's also got a fantastic soundtrack. Really reminiscent of like arcadey SNES or Amiga racing games like Lotus Turbo Challenge or Top Gear really really like the soundtrack and it's fantastic that you get the actual soundtrack CD in the game case with the game so for 25 quid great value for money in my opinion so as you can see we've got the game on now and we've got your basic selection single player multiplayer I've not tried multiplayer 
uh, and you've got your records obviously your options which are, are all your, your fairly regular what you'd expect to see um, when I first played it I thought god this is difficult I'll, I'll turn the difficulty down on the options screen and the default was already easy so that was a bit of a culture shock um, so we'll leave it on that um, the key to the game really is getting to learn the tracks because to start with it, it's quite fast action and when you don't know the track layouts you've got no chance of finish, finishing in the top three which is the goal and so there are some, object so there are some objectives in the game finish easy, normal, hard and insane I don't know what are to be honest I've not delved that deeply into it yet um, but yeah so we'll click on single player and then once you've selected that you've got a choice of Grand Prix mode which is where you've got to finish the the given track in the top three to progress to the next round and that's the way you open up new tracks in the game uh, because they're, they're sort of locked to start with and you've got to progress through the Grand Prix mode to open them up so you can then play them within the time attack mode although some more are available in the time attack mode to start with you do open up a lot by completing the Grand Prix mode and you get three credits and once those three credits are gone you've got to go back to the start so it's kind of some repetition to you know keep playing through it to get to tracks to practice them to get good enough at them to finish in the top three if you get them so we've got a choice of five cars i've tried them all to varying degrees of success they do have all different abilities as you can see speed acceleration and handling i've found that the barn bargain 116 is by far the best um, it handles much better it's also got good acceleration you sacrifice the top speed a bit but I find the other two far more beneficial so I always pick this car got a nice little cut scene here it doesn't last too long and so as I said you've got the mission is you've got to finish in the top three of each race and it's all about practice to learn the track layouts so far I think I've got up to the sixth round is it yes I think and didn't quite make the last race so more practice needed but it's a fantastic game absolutely love it plays fantastic looks great really retro sounds great on the first round. And the, the environments are kind of interactive as well. You can run over things and knock them into your opponent's way. You can also run over people and cows as well in that previous round. So it's quite comical.
first again. It's so addictive, I can't tell you. It, it's so addictive to play. Uh, when you nail it, it just feels so good. When you first play a track, you think, God, oh, this is bloody impossible, I'm never going to do it. But after a few goes, oh, it really comes together and you think, oh yes, nail that. And it feels mint. Third on that one. And all the tracks are quite varied, really. Some are some are a similar setting. You can see this one's like a night time track. You've seen that game mode now, and that keeps progressing. I think there are 20 tracks altogether from the uh, from the record screen. So we'll give up that and 
just briefly show you the other main game mode. So the other, you've got time attack where you can, which is good because you can then practice the tracks. Um, you know to try and be able to beat them then in the Grand Prix mode because that's the one I've got to in Grand Prix mode Palm Tree does it but didn't beat it so now I can sort of go in and practice it before I replay the Grand Prix mode which is quite good and they're the ones I'm yet to open up and like I say I think there are 20 or so that I've counted and the other game mode is challenge mode now this it's kind of like the original micro machines on the Mega Drive, and as you can see, there are four. The the, the, uh, the first of which is the only one you can play to start with, and it, you've got to sort of race against this opponent with this this lobster guy. God knows what he's got, lobster hair. But anyway, I presume if you beat him, you open up the next one and so on. And you've got five challenges to play against him. The first two of which I've done. I presume once you've beat all five, you open up the next character. Um, but this works exactly like Mega Drive Micro Machines, in that you're just against him, and you've got to outrun him to score points, and if you score five points before he does, you win the round. But you'll see what I mean in a minute. Three, I've not tried this track before, so one, I'm one. not going to do any good here. So he'll be beating me. He's just scored one there. Three, two, one. Flash. There you go. Three, two, one. He'll probably win this 5-0 because I've not played this, rep, this track before, like I say. So he's won that round now, and obviously you've got to try and do that to him. I need more practice on that track, but just gives you a flavour of the other, the main mode in the game. There, um, I much prefer the Grand Prix mode myself, but the Challenge mode is fun. Um, time attack is very useful, like I say, for practicing the tracks. And uh, obviously, to play two player again, which you, it would really excel two player, I would imagine. I, I've not tried that myself, um, but it, it must be excellent, just like my crown machines was. So, there we go, guys. That's a quick look at uh, Rush Rush Rally Reloaded on the Dreamcast by uh, Wave Game Studios. Um, they, they have got a website. If you want to check them out um, but uh, hope you enjoyed it great game in my opinion well worth 25 pounds fantastic especially if you you're mad about your retro and your arcade races it's a win-win so enjoy the 
second game is Yeah Yeah Beebis. Now this is a total different cup of tea. I believe this was this was originally going to be a, an NES game way back way back when, um, but for whatever reason it never got released. And all you know, however many years later, thirty years later, somebody sort of I don't know if they've discovered it or, or you know or whatever they've, they've got some sort of idea. I'd like to re sort of relaunch that game and give it the the exposure it, it, it was never given back in the day and I think it's been enhanced I think it's sort of a sequel to a game that never existed and the famous youtuber John Riggs has had a hand in this he's helped develop the game apparently um, it does tell you on the instructions inside the box um, so I'm assuming he's got it on his channel I, I, I would imagine he, he's got something to do with it um, but it's a very basic kind of single screen arcade game as you'd expect to find in the early 80s and I like those I'll just throw that out there to start with so that's you know it's, it kind of gets up on, on the right footing to start with with me but that said when I went to Dana's shop I didn't particularly go thinking well I've got to buy that it, I was after Rush Rush Rally uh, but then when I discovered this was a tenner I thought well you know ten pounds you know it's not a great deal of money is it it's got to be worth a chance and so I, I went for it obviously um, now I've looked on the website this doesn't appear to be on the Wave Game Studios website for some reason so I don't know why, maybe it just hasn't been updated yet. Um, but it, it's 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 definitely one of their games. It you know it does say it on the back. And there's a little bit cartoon caricature of John Riggs as well. Um, but yeah, as I say, it's, it's a single screen arcade style game that you'd expect to find in the early 80s. And it's very much an NES style game on the Dreamcast you could easily believe you were playing on an NES. It, it looks like an NES game. But it's a basic premise where you you control a little dude at the bottom of the screen and you've basically got a time limit where you've got to kill a set amount of bad guys within that time limit. If you do, you progress to the next level. If you, your time runs out or you lose your lives, you die. Uh, but thankfully it's unlimited continues um, and there, I believe that according to the the box there are only 10 levels after which you fight some super bad dude um, now it does get quite tricky so far I've managed to get to level 7 um, but it, it seems quite random in the fact where the enemies generate it doesn't seem the same all the time which is which is good obviously um, but the time limit does get really tight on later levels and unless you pick up the time bonuses it almost seems impossible to progress and you don't always get the time bonuses so it does seem a bit potluck in that sense but that said it's a really addictive game and I'm really liking this for 10 quid it's an absolute bargain but we won't waffle on any longer We'll cut to some game footage and you can see what you think yourself of Yeah Yeah Beebies. Oh, here we are again. This is the second game. Brand new Dreamcast game in 2022. Um, the second game from Wave Game Studios. And this time we're looking at Yeah Yeah Beebies. Which is... It's a homebrew game, I believe. And it's it's kind of... An old school single screen arcade game um, but I think it, it was originally planned from what I understand it was it, it was gonna be an S uh, an NES game and for whatever reason it never got released and all these years later it's kind of been remade or I'm not sure if it's been remade or um, enhanced but anyway it's been 
Loving League now released for the Dreamcast and it's been the the well-known YouTuber John Riggs has had some kind of hand in developing it and uh, there is a small feature on him in the manual so as I say it's it's really similar to what you'd expect an NES game to be so it, it's not obviously utilizing the Dreamcast powers because it's it's fairly simplistic but I am finding it exceedingly addictive according to the the box and instructions the aim of the game is to kill all these sort of clown face dudes before the time runs out and that's your mission that's as simple as it is it's a single screen game as you can see and you've got the time limit at the top and you've also got the amount of the bad guys you've got to kill which it tells you at the start of the level within the given time limit so we've done that as you can see it's also got really cool sort of 8-bit style music and the one tune is very similar to Manic Miner i noticed the levels have changed or do change as you go through obviously it's more complex now we've got a second level with ladders and the enemies do seem to randomly appear they don't seem to be in a set pattern which becomes more of a problem on later levels we've got a 15 second bonus there as you, if you might, you might have noticed which is very useful and essential on later levels I have found on later levels it's impossible to do it without the time bonus and it does seem random so it, on that basis it, it, it's quite tricky to make progress when an element seems to be based on pop look it gets more tricky obviously the more levels there are to negotiate because it takes time to run between the levels and according to the box there are 10 levels in total after which there's some battle with the head honcho but as of yet I've not managed to get to the last level I think level 7 is the furthest I've got these spiky things kill you There you see, the time's run out, but we had two left, so we failed that one. But luckily, it's got infinite continues. But as simple as it looks, and as basic as it looks, it is really, really addictive. I am really liking the game. I really wasn't that optimistic when I bought it. I thought, well, it can't be much good for £10. But, it's well worth it, guys. It's really good. Like I 
so I think seven is the furthest I've got. Now that's good, we've got a 15 second bonus there. So it does seem totally random when you get them. long reach either. With 18 seconds to spare, so we didn't even need the 15 second bonus then. Ah, uh, yes, I remember this one. we go that was a quick look at yeah yeah babies and for me a really fun game if you like your old school single screen arcade games I honestly don't think you can go wrong with that it doesn't matter that it's not using the Dreamcast capabilities it's a real fun game and hats off to the developers and John Riggs they've, they've done a corking job there for me um, so yeah, yeah, babies. It's yeah, yeah, good. 
I hope you enjoyed that one. What did you think? Personally speaking, I'm well impressed with both games. I think they both play really well and they're both really enjoyable games for not much money, but really. You know, 35 quid for two brand new Dreamcast games. I don't think it's too bad, especially when they're both really playable and really good. In particular, I think this is a fantastic game. It's just, it's really addictive. Yes, it is tricky until you know the track, but once you get to know it, oh, it's so, it's so, so good, honestly. I thoroughly recommend this to anybody who likes anything sort of racing game orientated. But even if you're not a big racing game fan, it, I'd imagine multiplayer, this would be really good. So that's an awesome game, in my opinion, and well worth your 25 quid. And again, that's well worth your 10 quid. I mean, yes, at 10 levels it's short, but it's a really fun game. You know, 10 quid's not much more than a, a digital download, is it, these days? And you've got a physical game here for 10 quid, so it's an absolute win. I'm looking forward to trying the other three of these Wave Studio releases. Because um, if there are three like these two, again, it, it, it's a massive bonus. And I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to getting back to Dana's shop. So don't forget to hit Dana up if, if you, you want to buy some of these Wave Studio games. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to play the others now. I'm, I'm really looking forward to Xenocider because that looks really good. Um, that's kind of a... It looks a cross between Space Harrier and Sin and Punishment to me. Um, and like I say, Intrepid is um, a Metroidvania. And um, Flea is obviously on the Evercade. That's, that, I haven't got that cartridge myself, unfortunately. But um, it does look a particularly fun, again, simple 2D platformer. But there you go guys, so exciting to get brand new Dreamcast games in 2022, um, hope you enjoyed them and let me know your thoughts, maybe you've already got them, let me know, but it'd uh, be great to share them with you and uh, I'll see you on the next one, sayonara. <laughs>